Hello all, uh, Happy New Year's. Um, friends and family and the Pittsburgh expats all over the place. I wanted to give you, uh, I wanted to record a video because I'm not going to see a lot of you this year, this New Year's. Um, and if I did, I probably would have this conversation with you, hopefully, maybe. Um, sort of an address. Um, an address that you're not going to hear from politicians or institutional leaders, religious leaders. Um, you know, because they're not there to get you to think. They're there to keep the status quo and keep the money rolling. Um, I turn on the national news today, and it uh, looks like the war against Iran is really basically a sure thing. It's, uh, it's already been decided in the corridors of power. The, um, the international banking cartels that really run the governments and the social institutions in this world have already sort of decided they're next. Um, and that's really a shame because, uh, despite some really regressive social policies, I'm sure the average Iranian is pretty cool, um, you know, a peace-loving individual, um, and they probably have better music and food than, say, the average person in Cleveland. Um, but anyway, um, and then I turn on local news, and I see a lot of you are fretting about this Allegheny County property reassessment. Um, I have a vacant building, and you know, I paid fifteen thousand dollars for it, and you know, it was appraised at forty. Now it's a hundred thousand dollars. It's the best investment I've ever made. I know it's absurd, um, and it's easy to get caught up in you know in these personal sphere of concerns that happens when something like this happens. Um, I, I often observe, you know, in my experience, that the users who have the worst social economic disposition are the ones who are least informed about how the world really works, and that's they just don't have a lot of time um, to consider, you know, uh, global situation, history, and economics. Uh, you know, they're just preoccupied with um, subsistence living, and they don't have time to consider bigger issues. And that's what you know the Occupy movement, those brave people down there at the Occupy movement. Um, Really represent. They are. Uh, they have the same disposition, and yet they possess the acute understanding um, of society and economics and history, and it gives them pause um, and hope and strength. And I don't think they're going anywhere. Um, they're there to tell us that we don't all necessarily need to participate in a lot of the abhorrent behavior that society just perpetuates, uh, especially this time of the year. And maybe that's the message that they're having trouble getting through. Um, to the rest of us, because when a lot of us are in, you know, in despair and in trouble, we put up that that sphere where we think the world revolves around us, and we have trouble seeing the bigger picture. I know because I had that problem for a long time. It, it's that uh, it's that awakening that uh, can happen, you know, with knowledge. Um, and uh, and I, you know, as an adult, I see the connections between this Iran thing and the Occupy movement and this Allegheny County property reassessments, you know, turn 30 this year. Um, and maybe this is a good day of the year, the last day, to put ourselves outside of our everyday social circles and just try to abstract, you know, ourselves from, from family and friends and just kind of see the bigger picture. Um, it's an exceptional time to reflect. Um, this reappraisal of home values is just, you know, it's absurd. It's uh, a magical appreciation of monetary value in your property, in your house, that occurred, you know, without lifting a finger. All you have to do is fire the synapse pattern in your brain that acknowledges the authority of the Elegant County Office of Property Reassessment, and, uh, and uh, there you go. You've achieved all of that monetary value. Um, the money supply that is, all of the money in circulation, more or less, out there, in banks, on books, in people's pockets, is just expanded by simply acknowledging it. And that monetary value, it's the same way that if I put $100 in a bank and, you know, the bank is legally able to lean, or uh, they're able to make loans to somebody else at up to 90% of that. Um, and, then, and then on top of that, charge interest, 10, 15, 20%. Um, and the the $90 was never theirs to lend out, and the 20% uh, interest that they're going to charge on it uh, is just magically created out of thin air. Um, and the only way to pay back that interest 
is to create more economic output um, through which the creation of profit through your own labor, sale of your own labor to a bank, or um, by companies paying back their loans by creating profits, by selling things at margin. And uh, so the money just keeps expanding in society. And maybe a lot of you are unaware of how that whole system works. Um, uh, by just creating more money, the value of existing money continues to depreciate. And there's an inherent, uh, like a structural inflationary system going on here. And so we all have to make more money. And that's what we're all caught up in. And that distracts us from the real goals that, that a society or an, ec an economic system should have. Um, goals like feeding and housing and educating and caring for the well-being of all the individuals in the society or on the planet. Um, goals like economizing, which is what an economy should do, and that's not what we're doing. Truly noble goals like deep space exploration and exploring the potential of the human condition. Um, those are just not going to happen in this kind of economy. And uh, I mean, we need to maybe start asking ourselves some really tough questions about whether or not this is the economy that represents us as a, as a people. Um, that said, I'm going to post two videos with this one. And they're part of the Zeitgeist film series. I'm going to post videos number two and number three. Um, they're long. They're um, important. They're made by Peter Joseph. He's an independent filmmaker. And he's asking some really important questions about the, uh, the future of civilization on this planet. I'm not going to post his first movie. Um, and it's not because I don't want to offend anybody. Um, I'm not looking for safe positions on anything. Um, the first movie is an exceptionally evocative look at the relationship between religion, um, economics, our society, um, how the 9-11 reaction, the results of 9-11 have sort of expressed the absolute worst parts of the human foreign and domestic policy um, and degraded this society um, to uh, you know, just a, you know, just completely um, undermined a lot of our true values. And with 2020 hindsight, um, you can form, you're an adult, you can form your own opinions about what 9-11 meant for society, what it means to you, why we're in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, the second and third two movies um, are an addendum to the second, to the first movie, and um, the third movie is really um, a proposal, um, a uh, exploration into the future of, of future economies and um, watch them learn a little bit about Western um, Western civilization and our current economic system you know although I'm working on an MBA um, it, it doesn't take a prerequisite of two hundred fifty thousand dollars in personal debt with Sally Mae and an MBA to really understand that there are adverse aspects inherent in our current economic system that do not help the human condition. Um, watch them, consider and question them, question your own values, your own beliefs, your own stereotypes and uh, and uh, perceptions and bias, you know. Um, the goal here is not to indoctrinate anybody. The goal here is to start asking questions. Uh, Peter Joseph certainly doesn't want to indoctrinate anybody. He would abhor the idea. He wants people to be thinking for themselves. Um, and that's what I'm hoping to share with you. It's don't take it as gospel. It's certainly not representative of my beliefs. Um, but uh, I think this is a good time of the year to maybe start thinking about that, um, especially with so many people in need this time of the year. But this year, I'm going to build a house. Um, I'm going to do it in the most sustainable manner that's possible. I'm going to do it uh, in the most environmentally neutral way possible, and the house is going to last. Um, that's my goal, um, and, and it's a lot of that. My inspiration comes from people like Peter Joseph, so um, and the Zeitgeist films, and, and thinking critically and trying to do creative problem solving. What are you going to do this year? That's my question that I would have for you. Uh, my hope is that you'll watch these videos and you'll gain in a little bit of knowledge and educate yourself and inform yourself about how the system works, and then maybe the problems that persist in your everyday life or um, in your in your neighborhood, in your community, in your city, maybe they won't, won't seem so insurmountable because um, they really aren't. You know, once you understand and inform yourself, then you're really armed in order to 
to deal with them. Um, and that's my hope. Um, I said to somebody recently, um, uh, it's kind of like that Bob Marley fairy tale from you know the movie. Uh, um, I am legend, where he says, you know, Bob Marley gets shot by a guy, you know, a bunch of times, and then two days later he gets up on stage and plays a show, and they ask him, how, how could you possibly do that? And he says, well, there's, you know, um, only a few people on the earth, you know, um, that are really out there to make it a worse place, and they're not taking any vacation days. And so we can't either. And there's 7, 000, 7 billion people on this planet this year. We, we surpassed that mark and that we know about. And I maintain that there's probably only, if you consider all the people who run all of the international banking cartels, um, all the people in the, in, the, in the pop culture scene and, uh, you know, Justin Bieber's, and... Um, and you know all of the terrorists in the world who are willing to die for you know a cause. There's probably only five thousand people in this world who are out there trying to make it a worse place. And um, I was I was about to tell her this, and she just cut me off. She preempted me, and she said, "You know, they're doing an exceptional job." Um, and so, you know, large corporations have done an exceptional job placating the public and influencing everybody to go back to sleep, especially with this. Uh, American Gladiators uh, thing we call the Republican National Convention um, and we've sort of lost track of um, the serious dialogue that we were having internal dialogue that we need to have with ourselves and within our families and within our communities um, about the future of um, the future of, our, of our, our society and our civilizations and the world is groaning and I just want to go on the record and state, you know, this is a good time of the year to start thinking critically about uh, the future. So watch these videos. I'll post them. Um, I wish I could be there with you guys to um, celebrate, but um, I won't, so I know you guys are counting on us. Uh, some, of you, some, of the, some of my older relatives are counting on the future generations. I just want to let you know that there is awareness. It is growing, and uh, hopefully this will be a, a joyous year of um, rediscovery and um, in innovation and hope and, and development and hopefully we can make the world a better place starting in 2012. Thanks a lot. Love you guys. Peace.